there is a dystopian city that has inspired movies such as Batman Begins and games such as Call of Duty. At its peak, the city was a dense maze of over 500 slum buildings, home to more than 50,000 residents. So wrapped in shadows it was that it earned the Cantonese nickname the City of Darkness, a place where one could navigate from one end to the other without ever setting foot on any terrain. At this city, the triads held sway acting as judge, jury, and executioner all in one. This is the city of Kowloon, the walled city of Hong Kong. The beginning of the city is a tale twisted with the threads of multiple governments, historical events, and even wars. But what's truly astounding about Kowloon is its organic growth. Believe it or not, buildings were thrown together side by side then on top of one another, and finally crammed into any available space. Astonishingly, there was no planning permission to speak of, not a single blueprint or zoning law in sight. Over time, the city swelled, buildings fused, and the chaos gave birth to an integrated living system, a city grown organically. An organic city cannot develop without its problems, and Kowloon City was no exception. But there was one problem that caused some apartments to skyrocket in value and popularity. You see, the city lacks one of the most important resources that many take for granted every day, and that is sunlight. If you are living on the outside of the building or in one of the apartments facing inward to the courtyard, you are in the prime area. Most residents did not have access to any windows, but luckily they had access to electricity in their rooms. Interestingly, one of the benefits of living in the city was not having to pay for electricity if you needed it. Most residents did not pay for electricity. Instead, they tapped into other electrical networks which would flow through the city. Due to the size and complexity of the cable network systems, it was unlikely there would be any kind of repercussions. It's not uncommon for locals to talk about the overhanging cables, wires, and pipes, but there is a massive component missing. Let's face it, we as humans don't need a lot. We need access to healthy foods, clean water, and safe shelter. Your shelter, whether it be a palace or a cave, needs to be roomy enough so that you can sleep, drink, eat, and continue living. So this raises the question, what about the garbage? Well, it turns out, for most of its history, the city has an incredibly ingenious method, introducing the pickup and throw method. Waste was often thrown on the rooftops or into one of the shafts in between the buildings. This causes a lot of smells and rats in certain parts of the city. So, with all the issues the city faces, the question is why? Why would a person or family decide to settle in Kowloon City? There are a few reasons, but most residents felt let down by the government and literally had nothing. It might not have been pretty, but people did make money here. Certain businesses and professions were booming. And besides, locals abided by their own laws and were somewhat freed from the constraints of Hong Kong. Common jobs included faith healers, drug traffickers, and self-taught dentists. Even though there were some qualified professionals, it was not uncommon for amateurs to give a profession a go. You got to admire their confidence. Businesses were often small restaurants that often sold illegal meats. Deep inside the city, there were many factories operating, many without suitable airflow, which impacted the air quality in the area. But one of the biggest and most controlled businesses was that of drugs. The triads controlled the drug flow inside the city and built several gambling dens. But unexpectedly, the triads were looked upon fondly by many. The thing to remember is that this city is free from police, safety inspectors, and even tax collectors. And you know how hard it is to get tax collectors to back off. 
So the triads were the people running the city. The group acted as the city hall. They recruited firefighters. They kept law and order in the dark alleyways. They paid retirement costs for the elderly and even established a retirement care home. But even with the ever-growing staircase and complex dark alleyways within the city, most residents did not take part in any sort of crime and many reported feeling very safe. Some have even gone on record to say the city is likely safer than cities in the West. There is also evidence to suggest that even though the city is chaotic and unlike any other, there was a level of organization that would have been needed during its development. In 1993, the city's lease reached its end and faced with growing anxieties over safety, the government made a firm decision. The residents were to be relocated and the complex structures that had once teemed with life were to be torn down as the dust settled and the city's physical presence vanished. Memories lingered. Both residents and foreign visitors can't help but look back on its heyday with a sense of nostalgia. It was a time when the city buzzed with activity, people weaving in and out of the narrow passageways, conducting their daily affairs. Despite its reputation as the city of darkness, a somewhat calm vibe was felt by some people in those crowded alleys and stacked apartments, a unique sense of community flourished a microcosm that operated on its own terms. Many still recall the sights, sounds, and even the smells that made the city an experience like no other. Its legacy continues to echo, a fascinating chapter in urban history that won't be forgotten. If you ever find yourself in Hong Kong, don't miss the chance to visit the walled city park which now stands in its place. It's more than just a beautiful and tranquil park. What makes it truly unique is its connection to the city's history and the remnants of the original fort. It's a popular spot for visitors. And while you're there, it's almost surreal to think about the towering interconnected high rises that used to stand in that very spot, housing tens of thousands of people. The park stands as a testament to the past, offering a glimpse into what once was. Thanks for watching until the end, dude. I really appreciate it. Check out this next video.